Pregame.com. Alabama, LSU, BCS National Championship game. All right, here's where we start this conversation. Usually we say Team A at Team B, and I think we maybe should here, except it seems like a lot of people are looking at this game as a neutral field. I personally believe LSU has at least half of the home field advantage here. What's your take on that? Without a doubt. It's Bayou country down there. I mean, Alabama may travel well, and then they may, you may not be asking them to travel across the country to get there. But, but let's talk about LSU is, you know, New Orleans. Let's talk about what traveling well means. Typically in a bowl game, tickets are there to, to be had. I was at the Orange Bowl a few years ago when Kansas was there. And it was a rainy night. It wasn't a great game against Virginia Tech. Literally, you could get tickets for five or ten bucks. That was a BCS game. Clearly, these other bowls, the tickets are easy to come by. So the question is, do, are the fans dedicated enough to want to make it there? But in a BCS game, the tickets are literally five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a ticket, even for OK seats. I don't think it's about will; it's about financial ability. So the question is, who's getting those tickets? And the way I understand it, I think it's seventeen thousand or so Alabama gets, seventeen thousand or so LSU gets. Then there's thirty thousand. I was talking to a guy from down there that are just generally going out to local right. businesses, local boosters. Now, how likely are they to be fans of LSU? Not to mention, if they are going to sell their tickets, they're going to price them to someone they know locally. Now, I was at, just by happenstance, the BCS game against the high State, LSU high State, in the last championship game that was in Louisiana four years ago. And I happened to be at the Oklahoma one four years before that. In both games, Oklahoma, clearly a big school. Ohio State travels as well as anyone. It was 75-25 LSU. That's what you're going to see here. I happened to be in New Orleans the week before these two met. I was there for Halloween. They met the following week. Everywhere I went, this is all they talked about. No one cared about that week's Saints game. I remember the Saints were playing the Rams and they lost. No one cared about that. The city wasn't down. Everyone was looking ahead to LSU Alabama. There's no bigger game for them than this one. Even with the Saints, you know, on their way to the Super Bowl, right now, all focus in New Orleans is on LSU. So let's say it's worth two points, and I think that's fair because it's not worth the full four points that LSU would get at home because though, though they are familiar with the venue, they're not as familiar with the yeah, venue. I'd go one and a half, too. Yeah. I would say one and a half if they weren't familiar with the venue, but because they are, I'd go as high as two. All right, so now it's two. Now, Alabama is a one-point favor. So you're saying right now, though, it's a little funny around pick them because you go from one to pick, from pick to one, so it's not like a full two-point move. But they're saying that, let, let's just say, that, that Alabama is three points better. This, to me, is one of the craziest lines I've seen because when Alabama hosted LSU, Alabama was a home team. They have about four points for home field. Right. The line was about four and a half. Yeah, five, so five and a half. It hovered. It went back and forth. It closed around yeah. four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So let's call it five, though. So in that case, they're saying that Alabama was one point better. Now, since then, LSU won at Alabama. LSU has been more impressive since that game with the quarterback playing even better after that game. They have a young running back that's kind of coming to his own. Alabama, I would say, a little bit flat, you know, playing well, but, but steady. LSU trending up a little bit. Now you're telling me all of a sudden Alabama, who was one point better prior, is now three points better? I, I agree with you totally. And let's take it a step back, though. The line opened with LSU. As two and a half. Point favorite, right. Two the, point favorite. It, you know, it Kyle Neva, I was talking to Nick Bondonovich, said they opened two and a half. Right, right. So LSU was the favorite for this game until the professional betters got involved and until the market started talking. Which is, it, which is the point here. Two out of three bets, if you go to sportsbookspy.com, you can see the bet percents on every game. Right now, it's a little less than 66%. LSU the most bets, 66 to 34, but clearly a vast majority of the big bets are on Alabama. And that's exactly, unless this is the biggest phonied up game that we've seen in a long time, meaning 
This is exactly what they were hoping for, get the line to start going that way so then they could come back and get down on LSU as a nice dog when they opened up as a favorite. Unless this is a case of that, um, they're telling you that the, the wise guys love the Alabama side. And more importantly, the sports books are telling you they agree with the wise guys because you got to factor in. If you talk to any books out here, they're terrified about this game because there's so much exposure that's going to end parlay tickets, teaser tickets, seven, eight, nine, ten team parlays and teasers that all will close on that night. And the majority are closing on LSU. I mean, that's what everyone's saying. That's the public side, right? Yeah, now. even and though they have um, some, you know, Alabama exposure on, on long parlays, the, the, if LSU covers this number, they're going to get crushed. And according to books, they seem to like this side from what I've gathered. They like which side? They like the Alabama side because they could easily limit their exposure by adjusting based on, on how, you know, the liability that they have. Instead, so, so explain that because we're talking a lot of pronouns here. Right. Adjusting in what way? Okay. Now you have Alabama as a two-point favorite. And yet, uh, one, let's call one, it one. one, one and a half, you're exposed on the LSU side on exotics. All right, so you're saying that let's look at two powers of action. One power, the exotics, the parlays and the teasers. Which is, which is what hurt the books here in the final week of the season. All right, fair I mean, enough. They're making a lot of noise about that to where they're saying, let's change parlay card odds. you got two powers. One's the exotics where they have LSU exposure. Now there's a second pile, which is the straight bets, which right now it would seem they have Alabama exposure because clearly they're the moving the money. line yeah. from the big money. So is, doesn't that work? Wouldn't you rather be, if you can be exposed one way in one pile and one way in the other, in the end it might even out? I don't think so because what's going to happen is the straight bettors, the public straight bettors, haven't spoken yet. Well, they have, but not the way they're going to speak on game day. Exactly. And you would expect the two... To, Two to three, or the sixty-six percent ratio on LSU to continue. To continue. Okay, so especially now as a dog, as a so much you're saying dog. you're saying in the straight bet pile, as the public money becomes bigger and bigger, they're going to be more and more exposed to Alabama, and you're saying, or I'm excuse me, more and more exposed to LSU, and what they're doing is by well, I've saw as high as two today, on Alabama minus two. They're inviting more LSU action, and instead of limiting your liability. Mm -hmm. Some seem to me like they're actually taking a position and saying, not only do we want to be exposed on LSU, we're willing to take straight bets as well. It's, it looks to me, as far as reading the market, that they do believe Alabama is the better team. That when you compare. So you're saying not only are the, we can learn two things from the way the market moves. One is the way the big batters are batting, but number two is the way the sports books are responding to that. Exactly. And you're saying in this case, they're aggressively moving towards Alabama, even though when you count the exotics and you count the expected straight action on LSU, that they are still going to be lopsided LSU, but they're still willing to make that even more attractive as they move towards Alabama. Exactly. Which is telling you the books like Alabama too. By stopping more wise guys from getting down on Alabama and inviting the betting public to come in on LSU. Because what we have right now is what Marco might call a trap game, and that you're saying, wait a minute, LSU's number one, they're defeated they beat alabama at alabama but i get points with lsu exactly i mean that's a very simple handicap and quite frankly i've bought into it because when i look at the game i see great value on lsu here though is what's causing me to call it a pick but not like a really big pick is i think this is a great lesson is if you know if you see value and you know why you see value. You can define where it's coming from. They don't understand how good this guy is. They don't understand this, that, or the other. Then I think that's where the value is, you bet it. But if you think you see value, but you can't explain why it's there, chances are there's something you don't know. You're missing something. I, I agree totally. The thing is this, right now I don't think there's any question LSU is the better team. They had the tougher strength of schedule. They beat Alabama in Alabama. And I, you saw what they did in the, in the SEC championship game. I mean, they are the better team. When the season started, no. 
Alabama was the perceived better team. If you looked at the season win total, Alabama's was 10 with the over favored, and LSU was 9.5 under minus $1.60 is what it opened at. So Alabama was perceived the much better team going in, and that was reflected when they met the first time by what the point spread was. But as of today, I can't say that I, I, I agree with that. From what I've seen, LSU looks like the better team to me. And yet, I'm at questioning myself as a handicapper, as a better. What am I missing that these guys, whose information I respect, obviously, who have proven they beat the market, otherwise, why would the books be running to move the number, are loving Alabama the way they are. And that's why I'm saying, unless this is the biggest phonied up game we've seen in a long time and probably ever in BCS history, they really love the Alabama sign. All right, guys, so I'm going to give a pick on LSU, but I'm going to really make it modest because I do think there's something here we're not seeing, and I think that's a good lesson. Remember, as a batter, the ability not to bet a game is one of our biggest strengths. A couple other stats. Lowest total in BCS history of in the title game, and number two, uncovered something interesting. In the BCS title game, the point spread has never mattered. The favorite and is covered every time. It won't here. And, uh, the, and the underdog has won the game every time. Well, with a low number, it's a lot easier this year. Yeah, last five well, years, well, average margin of victory in the BCS title game, 13.8 points. Final total points scored, 50.8 points. All right, guys. Probably going to be a blowout one way or the other. And we'll be back next week with even more videos. It's all at pregame.tv.